The next party era runs from 1860 to 1928. These are your two Republican eras. The reason you split the Republican eras in two is because even though this is a Republican dominated time, the Republican Party kind of changes its focus and its party platform. The first Republican era is the anti-slavery Republicans, and they rose in the 1850s as the anti-slavery party. And now they were the um, they received a coalition of support strong enough to win Congress and the president. And of course, their first Republican president was Abraham Lincoln. Now, if you can tell where they got most of their support was up north and in western states. So they received most of their support from people who were anti-slavery supporters. Of course, as you know from U.S. history, the election of Lincoln was a catalyst for war. Okay. Then the next Republican era is the Industrialist Party. And in 1896, the Industrial Republicans were people who supported a gold standard. And you have your gold standard urbanite, uh, industrial, big wig Republicans, business owners who believed in a gold standard versus your more populist people like William Jennings Bryan who wanted a free silver, you know, more a free silver movement who didn't want us to be tied to the gold standard but to actually have more supply of money out there so there would be more credit and so people um, common folk could get money to pay off debts and so farmers could have more money to grow their businesses but of course William Jennings Bryan never won the election William McKinley did and what we do is we see a time in the United States history where we have a domination of Republican presidents that are supporting industrialization, supporting the gold standard, and they get a lot of their voting support from the northern states. Okay, so just like in 1860, the anti-slavery Republicans got their support from the north because that's where your anti-slavery coalition was. Later, in, in 1896, the Northerners still support Republicans, but for a little bit different reasons. That's where your urban centers were. Now, the party did realign as it shifted its coalition of support to gold standard and high tariff supporters. So just because the Republicans were able to kick slavery out of the country didn't mean that they couldn't keep those Northern voters on the promise that they were going to make it easier to do business. Okay, um, 1932 to 1968, you have the dominance of the New Deal Coalition and the, or the New Deal Democrats. These are Democrats under the leadership of FDR, they were able to align voters into a voting bloc called the New Deal Coalition. These were people who liked the promise of FDR when he said that he was going to give poor people government jobs, give old people government assistance, give families with children welfare support. With those promises, he was able to attract a coalition of support in the South, where you had high concentrations of minority populations that were greatly affected by the Great Depression, laborers, urban voters, and immigrants. This really solidified the Democrats now as the working man's party. So just like in, 18, in the late 1800s, the Republicans became the big business party. Now in 1932, the Democrats had their coalition of support from the working man. And Congress was dominant, even though the coalition or the party era of the Democrats and the New Deal coalition went from 1932 to 1968. Congress was dominated by Democrats up until 1994.
Now what happens after 1968? You have the South realigning with the Republicans and you have an era of divided government. No more can we point in our modern history, in our brief modern history, can we say that we have a major party era that's dominated by one political party or the other. As people have become more independent and been more willing to split ticket vote, and as people get more disenchanted with the political parties, there is less domination of one party or the other. And you really can't pinpoint which party has dominated. <clears throat> now, Nixon was able to take those southern states. Now, I've showed you the electoral map of the South, and I showed you how the South was dominated by Democrats for years, from 1860 to the 1930s. 1940s, 1950s, and the 1960s, the South kind of loses its way. They become de-aligned. Nixon sees this and he takes this opportunity to realign the South for the Republican Party for certain. Okay. Um, what we see now as a common trend, like I said, is a normal division. As the parties become less important and as people are voting on the basis of candidate appeal as opposed to party affiliation more and more, people are becoming de-aligned. Okay. Why does divided government matter? Nothing gets done. Few promises are met. Okay. Um, Obama's weak coalition. Right now, Obama is, does not have very high approval ratings. Right now, his base is not very pleased with him. It's going to be harder for the Democrats in the 2016 election, unless something turns around for Obama, it's going to be harder for the Democrats to win the election because Obama can has undermined the coalition of support that Democrats generally have. Dealignment is the trend. In the future, one party might dissolve. Um, and a new party might be born out of the old one. That's how Republicans, that's why Republicans are worried about the Tea Party. Do they embrace the Tea Party? Or is the Tea Party going to be something that takes them down? Nonetheless, that is a concern. Are we coming up to a new party era?